meeting in order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Trustee Harris? Present. Trustee Masek? Here. Trustee Peterson? Here. Trustee Bluefire? Here. Trustee Berman? Here. Trustee Dominiac is absent. Mayor Gertner? Present. Uh, first item on the agenda is the approval of the April 13th, 2022 Committee of the Whole Meetings as presented. <clears throat> Do I have a motion and a second? So second. Motion Trustee Bluthart, second Trustee Peterson. Roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Yes. Peterson? Yes. Bluthart? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no. Motion carries. Uh, first couple items on the agenda. Um, we have some acknowledgments tonight. Um, I know we have some um, local celebrities, so to speak, here in the audience. So the first person that we are acknowledging tonight is uh, Quentin McCormick. Quentin, are you here? We, st uh, we stand up so everyone knows who we're talking about here. All right, so uh, this is actually Quentin. He is a um, synchronized skating champion. I'm not sure which um, group or club. You have, are you with a specific club or group? Uh, team's elite. Team's okay, so actually this is the second national gold medal. His team won the gold in 2022, U.S. Nationals, just as COVID broke out. He's also an accomplished solo skater, received a gold medal. Uh, in moves in the field, which are test the test of skaters edge work. He also is a pre gold ice dancer and he has been skating and competing since he was four years old. So, congratulations. And, um, hopefully, we'll be uh, cheering. I don't know where the next Winter Olympics are, but hopefully, we'll be cheering you on there. Thank you. And next one, um, acknowledgement we have, uh, Kennedy Copeland, is Kennedy here? Yeah. Uh, there's uh, <laughs> uh, a four-way state Massachusetts champion. Um, so let's see. So she was the Illinois State Gymnastics Champion for level six, seven, and eight. Uh, that was held in early April in Northbrook. This is a US AG sanctioned event, and you'll see her first place results, which include she was the um, what she had, the score was uh, 9.5 on the on the vault. Was it to be the overall score as well? What was that? All right, so between the two of you, how much, do you, how much time do you spend at the ice rink or in the uh, gym practicing gymnastics? <laughs> <laughs> Most of your waking days? All right, are you also hoping yeah. to go to the Olympics someday? Is that your goal? All right, well, I would hope we both of you the best of luck and congratulations. Thanks for coming in. And if you want to come up here, you're welcome. You're used to it. Reverend Banks King, Illinois, a regional. All right, all right. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. All right. And as always, family and friends, this is your chance to escape and keep out closer for the rest of this meeting. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so next item on the agenda is um, citizens wishing to address the board. I, don't, I saw some people signing up over there. So do you want to pass the sheet down? Yeah. I'm assuming the people, um, if they've been at our committee of home meetings, would rather address the board before the committee of home meeting than at the board meeting. It's, these tend to last longer. So um, I see a couple in support of specific items, but I'm going to call you up now uh, if you wish to say something in support of specific items that we're voting on tonight. Um, let's try and limit our comments to two to three minutes so we can move the meeting along. And I'm just going to go in the order of the people that signed up. So the first one on the list is Beth Coe. 
Beth, do you want to come up and say anything? Sure. And Carolyn Ponder. Yeah, you can come up. You can come up to the um, dais here because we do have people that may be on um, Zoom watching. And you have to speak in the microphone for them to hear you. Um, my name is Beth Coe, and this is Carolyn Potter, and we are here in support of the um, ordinance change to allow uh, Drive Time Golf to receive their uh, liquor license. We're just here to show our support. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. See, less than three minutes. Perfect. <laughs> no, next is... Um, we have um, next on the list is Chris DeLulo. Um, not a specific agenda item, but we can, uh, if you want to come up and speak, the floor is yours. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Chris DeLulo. Uh, I just wanted to come and ask you guys as influential residents and parents in the community uh, to speak up on behalf of things that uh, we believe in and feel strongly about, hopefully you believe in and feel strongly about as well. Uh, obviously, you're aware of the things that we've been discussing, or uh, if you're not, um, one of the things I would like to inform you of is that in fourth grade at Oakland Elementary School, there are gender neutral bathrooms, fourth graders, boys and girls using the same restrooms. Um, in high school, there are books showing very explicit photos, well not photos, drawings technically, uh, that are free for the student body to check out, encouraged by the high school um, or to be available to students of um, uh, ages that we don't feel are appropriate for this type of thing to be available. So I understand the village can't do anything, village ordinances, the laws, Mary. everything like that. I'm not asking for you guys as a board to do anything other than as private citizens and influential residents, make your voice heard, make your opinion known. If, uh, if you disagree with these types of things and you feel like you should support, uh, support our movement, please feel free to speak out contact the schools, contact your constituents. Let everybody know that uh, this isn't something that we as, in, as a population of Antioch would necessarily agree. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next person that signed up is Kate Yeoman. I'm gonna respect your time and just say that I completely agree with Chris and you should really think about it. Thank you. <laughs> um, next on the uh, list, and this is maybe um, wants to wait until we come to the item, but we have um, Jackie Mathis and uh, Greg Gobogan, both here from Oakwood Knowles. Um, I know that's one of the agenda items. If you want to speak now or you want to wait until the item's called, okay. Um, and then we have... Um, Andrew Olson, is Andrew here that wants to address the board? Uh, floor is yours. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, uh, thank you very much for your service to start. Um, I share many of the, the same comments that, uh, that Chris and Kate have shared. Um, but I also come to you today as, you know, as a property owner, as an Illinois, or excuse me, as a well, former Illinois State Scholar, NIU graduate and alumni. Antioch High School graduate. I've been in this community my entire life, okay? And with some of the influences, which I know you may not have oversight in regards to curriculum, um, inklings of CRT and DLT as they come in uh, to the various schools that we have. Uh, I have three children, one in each of the schools in Antioch, and I love this community very much. There's a number of things which even as private citizens to show support, they concern the parents, they concern the property owners, they concern people, myself, unfortunately, will be moving outside of this community as, as a result of some of the influences here. And I hate to see it, but it's really, it, there's been a mass derision within the community about some of these subjects. And we're not just a small group. I mean, these things are, are shared in the community. And even if you don't have formal oversight as a member of the board, uh, or in your collective positions, supporting these things just as a concerned citizen would mean the world to us. Thank you. Amara? Okay, all right. So anybody else that wishes to address the board, otherwise we're gonna move on to the um, 
regular business of the committee of the whole. And you will not offend me if you don't feel like sitting through this and want to leave right now. So that's, that's <laughs> fine too. All right, next, uh, first item on the regular business agenda, <laughs> yeah, you gotta stay, is discussion regarding the bridge inspection at Oakwood Knolls. Um, this is, I know we have at least two, if not three members here to discuss this. We have Tim Hardnett and Steve Schwartz from HR Green, who are the village engineers on Zoom. Um, and this is relating to a um, presentation that was given by um, uh, Oakwood Knolls Association two months ago, probably, uh, with relation to the condition of a um, culvert there and the dredging project. So I think as uh, encapsulating everything that we're gonna discuss today, the real question from Oakwood Knolls is, um, is the culvert safe to dredge um, based on the report of the of HR Green? So with that, I'll give the floor to Administrator Kai. Yeah, just um, for background, um, you know, the culvert was photographed um, by some uh, members of the community and they came here and showed you some photographs of that culvert and there was some concern on uh, the integrity of the culvert. Um, I was asked to have our engineers from HR Green take a look at it, which they did, and they it wasn't an in-depth uh, study, but it was they made some observations. And then I believe in your packet you have a, an email that was written uh, with some of the results of their observations, which which basically said there's some deterioration of the culvert, and it's got uh, you know I, I guess as a estimate about maybe a 10 year lifespan left to it now. No engineer can predict when infrastructure will actually fail. Could be sooner, could be much later. Um, but uh, Trustee Pierce, I believe, asked for this to be on, on the agenda tonight. Um, so we have, I think, Tim Hartnett uh, from HR Green uh, attending via Zoom. And um, maybe he can summarize a little bit more of, of the findings of that, uh, of that letter. Yep. Thank you, Jim. Um, I have Steve Schwartz uh, also on the call who actually visited the site. I personally visited the site with, uh, with my team, but uh, Chad Piper from my office who also assists me in Antioch and Steve Schwartz, who is our bridge manager uh, for uh, well over 100 of our communities in the Chicagoland area, specifically City of Rockford, City of Elgin, uh, and many of the Lake County and uh, McHenry County communities we serve. So we were asked by, by Jim, we were given kind of the history of what people were asking for. Our main focus is always to go out and ensure that the uh, roadways are safe, that the slopes are safe. Is there any deterioration? Uh, you may recall we are a partner with the village when Orchard had uh, some settlement due to uh, deterioration. Uh, we've also were part of that evaluation through the Pittman property to give guidance for uh, for what when that was going what was happening there. Um, our team went out and Steve is on the line who can answer questions, but I'll quickly summarize it. Our team went out. Uh, we observed that at some point in time, either during a utility install or a guardrail uh, install. Uh, they had um, punctured uh, the top of the culvert. Um, there was no settlement on, in March when, when the team went out there. Uh, it was repaired. They had poured concrete in there. Uh, the roadway had no settlement, had no uh, depression, no, uh, you know, any signs of collapse for sure. Um, and uh, we just were asked to report on it. We took pictures, we took video, we, sh we shared that. Uh, we do this on a routine basis for Antioch. We have many other culverts in the community that are higher priority in our mind, but we are asked to provide this. And so on a yearly basis, we go around with Jim and Dennis and we evaluate our major drainage ways. We evaluate our culverts uh, that are crucial to our collector arterials, especially, and we rate and rank them. And so um, this particular bridge, our team felt very comfortable that it was not in Jeopardy at this time, it had about 10 plus years left. We gave budgetary numbers, which we often do just to start planning. Um, but again, uh, where we use the term uh, uh, very much, uh, very deteriorated was on the head wall. And that comes from road salts, just being exposed to the elements. Uh, Dennis and the team is gonna monitor that. Uh, and Dennis and, the, and his public works team will also go out there with the vector truck or a small piece of equipment and, uh, and, and get that information that there is quite a bit of sediment there that has come from the north 
down through uh, Wisconsin into Illinois and made its way into this culvert. So we, we acknowledge that, and that's all part of a, a routine observation maintenance program. So each and every year we will, now that it's on the list, now that uh, people have asked uh, what to do with it, uh, we'll certainly visit it and monitor it. And uh, Steve, you just want to one or two minutes as far as your what you saw and based on your expertise as our bridge manager, uh, uh, the info. Sure. Um, number one, can you hear me? I am attending yes. on my personal computer, and yep. for the life of me, I can't figure out why I can't turn the camera <laughs> on, uh, as opposed to my oh, you're work good. computer. Yep, but, you're good. Uh, I'm Steve Schwartz, um, structural engineer at HR Green. Um, uh, as Tim had mentioned, uh, bridge program manager for the city of Rockford, city of Elgin, and a number of other communities around here, um, responsible for uh, sending bridge inspection paperwork to IDOT for well over 150 bridges around the area. Um, beginning of March, we went out and looked at that culvert structure. Um, and as Tim had mentioned, as far as the top roadway portion goes, did not see any uh, depressions or indications of settlement around it. There was um, also, uh, obviously it looked like it had been cut uh, but patched from some previous utility installation. At the water line, there is deterioration. Um, and essentially, I would, uh, if I were to rate this one in an IDOT manner, I would put it at the low end. We typically rate them as uh, good, fair, or poor. This one would be probably more toward the low end of, of uh, fair but not poor. Um, saying that though, um, yeah, it, it's, it is time to start planning for replacement. It is not in eminent failure. Uh, I, don't, I do not believe at all that the roadway is uh, in eminent uh, danger there, but uh, it is time to start planning for replacement in the future. Thank you, Steve. Well, the one comment I heard uh, the mayor mention was, uh, maybe the team that was looking at dredging um, wanted, it sounds like they needed more information because from what they had seen or maybe what they observed, they weren't going to send their equipment in there until they kind of had a better understanding of what was below the silt. Um, again, as, as Dennis and his team get out with the Vactor truck, we can certainly participate with them, observe that, and report that back to the HOA or their contractors who are looking to dredge, but uh, uh, until we see that, um, you know, in, in our opinion, it, you know, we have to look at that, but our main focus was, is that road safe? Is the road, are the slopes stable? Is there any issue that we would need to close the road or put steel plates over it? And the answer at this time is no. Thank you, Tim. So um, it sounds like based on what I know the Oakwood Knowles is looking for and what you just said in your last part of this, that there's another step in this process that needs to happen between coordination between potentially Public Works, uh, HR Green, and the contractor that has been hired by the association um, to do whatever work needs to be done so they can feel that removing that uh, silt will not compromise the culvert to the road is kind of what I'm understanding. So um, I'll open the floor to the trustees and anybody who open knows if there's any questions. Um, it sounds like the next step in this is a coordinated effort of getting those three parties together to, to do that work. So um, with that being said, I'll go to the trustees first, ask you guys if you want to add anything and then trustees as well. So um, I know Trustee Pierce, you've been heavily involved in this matter. So I'll start with you as always. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Your Honor. And I'm glad to see Mr. Hartnett here and Mr. Schwartz. I've dealt with Mr. Hartnett for many years and he's always performed miracles for us. So I'm glad to see he's here. Uh, I've got several questions though. Um, first of all, what's the timeline on inspecting below the water line? Because we had a perfect opportunity when the, the channel was empty and now the channel's refilling with water, which in my opinion is gonna make it much harder to inspect below the water line. So I'd, I'd like to know the timeline. Uh, additionally, um, I, I, yeah, I think we need to report 
once we get that inspection finalized report to the homeowners association in writing as they've requested and i thought the board requested whether it's safe to dredge through that culvert in the manner they want to dredge which i think is a drag type dredge um and then um, once we determine what the silt condition is in there it's my opinion but it may not be the rest of the boards or the engineers opinions that the village has a responsibility for their portion of the bridge, either the silt removal or repairs underneath that bridge. Uh, so if the homeowners is gonna be doing silt removal dredging, we should be partnering with them for our portion of it. Uh, and then my final, uh, my final thought is, if it has an estimated 10 years or more lifespan, I think within five years, we should have a plan together to replace that bridge and fund it. Because there, there is surprisingly a lot of traffic that flows through Oakwood Knolls over that bridge from Wisconsin, the residents over there, and then the, our residents going up to Illinois. So it may not be a visible bridge to the whole community, but it's a well-used bridge. So that would be my inputs. And I, I'm waiting to hear from, from Oakwood Knolls to see what their con further concerns are. Thank you, Trustee. Any other trustees on the right side here who have any questions or comments on this? I'm going to wait until okay. I hear the Oakwood Knowles vote. How about this side? Any questions or comments right now? Oakwood Knowles, do you want to add anything? Questions? Concerns? Now's the time. Yeah, of course. Hello, board. Thank you very much for having us here tonight. Um, my name is Jackie Yannis. I am the president of the Oakland Mills Subdivision um, Association. And I want to just quickly thank everyone uh, first for getting the inspector out to the Bridgewood uh, culvert so quickly and making it a matter of priority. Um, I really do want to say thank you to Scott Pierce right now. You've crossed off a lot of things that I was going to uh, say tonight. Um, so at this time, I do agree with Mr. Pierce that. Uh, Dredging in the village culvert is a must. Uh, dredging needs to be done this year. This is something that uh, I just can't wait. Um, we would like to collaborate together because um, basically we have the channel on one side of the village culvert and the lagoon on the other side. So we have two responsibilities and then you have the village responsibility in the middle. So I mean, it only makes sense to come together and do this together as one big project um, at the same time. Um, as you can see in the inspector's report, there is a couple feet of sediment buildup. Um, so these two areas, they've actually been um, areas of priority in Oakwood Knolls, and we've been working on this for probably the past three years with research meetings. Um, we had our own engineers out there, and um, basically we're trying to figure out the best, most realistic plan for our residents. Uh, being a property owners association is very different from a homeowners association. Uh, we, the homeowners, we basically have the responsibility to maintain gifted properties. Um, however, we cannot. Um, we cannot make the annual dues mandatory. That's what makes us different from, an action, from a homeowners association. Um, and basically, uh, through research, we're, we're never going to be able to become a homeowner association, so we're always going to be stuck with the same thing, uh, trying to uh, just obtain funds and make these properties manageable. So basically, keep in mind, five years ago, we didn't even have 50 families or homeowners um, participating, contributing to these dues, annual dues. Now, um, we were up to about maybe 140 uh, from last year, so we're looking to have pretty much the same um, support, but that's not gonna do it. That's not gonna be enough. Um, so basically what it boils down to um, is that from these stormwater runoffs and stuff, we have, we're collecting water and debris um, and silt and chemicals from the Antioch uh, stormwater system runoff and as well as the Salem Lakes water runoff and the farms up there and stuff. So we're basically dealing with a large amount of water and buildup and pollution going into our lake. Okay, and it's considered a private lake. Therefore, we're not able to get grants ourselves. Um, again, it goes back to us being a property owners association as opposed to a homeowners association. 
Um, so really what it boils down to is we're just a few homeowners trying to maintain these properties for the entire subdivision community. Um, and we can't do it alone. It's realistically impossible without the villages, uh, without the village helping us figure out a solution to our community issue and this unbearable, unbearable financial burden that we've come across. So thank you for addressing this uh, potential, potentially serious situation and we look forward to working with you guys on it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I'm gonna go around, see the trustees uh, on this side, including Scott Pierce, who is on Zoom, wants to add anything. Trustee Pierce, Trustee Mesa, Trustee Peterson, anything you'd like to add at this point? I, I would just like to ask Mr. Hartnett, I, I, if, they, if they understand the dredging that they plan to do in there, whether it's a drag type or a, a pumping or a suction, I'm not a dredging expert, but I was just curious if your firm understands what they wanna do and what the impact on the bridge could be. Yes, I, we absolutely do. We do work with the Fox Waterway Agency on a yearly basis uh, doing this very task. Um, the waterway actually is, it has uh, the equipment, has the manpower, has the funding sources. They also have the collaboration with community. Um, I, I did ask uh, Joe Keller, the executive director, if there was any help uh, at this time. There, there wasn't in this area, but he certainly offered some suggestions um, that, you know, again, if, if that was part of our responsibility in the future, or if there's support from the board to, to, to give Jim the green light to engage us from a dredging, uh, it was, again, I apologize if I misunderstood the task. I was asked if that road was safe, if the culvert was safe, if uh, traffic over the top was, if there was any imminent danger, and I found that answer out. I, I did read the report, as did Ajay Jain, ahead of my resource group, uh, of what you are planning to do and, and collaborating with Wisconsin. Again, we can certainly clean that out, but until that uh, area from the north uh, figures out uh, how to minimize the runoff from the farm areas, from the properties, it's going to continually happen. So if we do our part uh, year over year, it's just going to keep happening. So um, my suggestion, and, and again, Jim and I um, and Dennis meet on a routine basis I can certainly collaborate with Dennis and Jim, uh, see when Dennis's team can get out there to answer your timeline question. Uh, yes, I'm, we are familiar with various techniques to remove sediment. Um, I would be a little hesitant to, to listen to a drag line uh, operation. What they do is they actually uh, put a plate, if you will, at one end and with the drag line, drag it through or try to drag it through the other end and then try to scoop it as they get it. And that, to me, with a corrugated metal pipe is, uh, is, is even if it was in great shape, is just a, a little dicey. But again, I, I think I, if Jim and Dennis or the board says, Tim, go ahead and meet with the contractor, meet with the HOA, we're happy to do it to understand what they're talking about. I think it always, uh, to be our benefit, to understand their timing, their schedule, where are they starting? Are they starting in the lagoon? Are they, and then working their way out and then working their way up? And what are they doing upstream, if you will? Um, but I think from the village's standpoint, Dennis and I can get together uh, with Steve and we can at least see uh, what type of condition the bottom is. If, if everyone feels it's appropriate, I can, we can certainly meet with the contractor and your representatives to understand the techniques, the volumes, the areas, what they're looking at doing. Confirm they have permits. This isn't something that you just go out and start doing in uh, sometimes waters of the U.S. or major drainage ways without a plan. So I personally haven't seen an actual uh, permitted plan, but happy to look at that. But uh, again, we can certainly try to evaluate and find out if there's any money for uh, grants and funding. But again, with private entities, private areas, it, it, it is a challenge as the uh, head of the Property Owners Association mentioned, but um, happy to help if the board wishes to uh, allocate some, some time and effort for us to, to at least understand the initial uh, phases of what they're thinking of doing. Thank you, Tim. So I think, um, again, I'll, I'll still go around with the trustees. What I'd like to see happen here is, um, again, bring this back uh, as necessary and say 30 days for the parties to get together and come up with a plan between the village and your firm and the contractors and the association. Um, I think that's a, as far as the actual dredging itself, 
um, I would suggest we do that in the second meeting of, um, <clears throat> of May and other uh, trustees chime in or any questions or concerns about this matter. Anything to add? No. Did you have something else you wanted to say? You look like you wanted to say something. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So my apologies. Um, I got my pages mixed up, but I did write it down so I didn't get all flustered and mixed up. So anyways, um, what I was saying about wanting to reach this level of support from our subdivision again, it's because these costs are well over a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars for us to dredge. And um, we won't hit that amount for many, many years to come. So I know um, it's, it's unfortunate that no plan was set in place earlier from the homeowners. I'm, you know, I can't speak for years in, in the past, but um, basically, you know that we at one point had chatted with the village about doing a grant with the village and only municipalities could um, apply for this grant. And I'm not sure where that uh, went to or whatnot. I know that Mr. Prime, I think was gonna be working on a grant. No. <laughs> not, okay. not, not, not specifically, but um, HR Green, who is the group presenting, um, they do this all the time and can help identify some of those items. And I personally talked to Fox Waterway about some of those items too. So okay. I think well, I think what what uh, we would do is the village would sign on and support any type of grants that you know may be available. Okay, so. but at this time we have no contractors right now. We we can't fund this. Sure, sure, and that's why I think uh, the meeting between HR Green, the village, and the association will lay the next step out, and potentially potential sources of funding if there are any there. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Anything otherwise, um, your, yeah. your honor, I, I think HR Green probably and staff probably needs the board's indication that they're that they're all willing to make sure that HR Green gets paid and that they can move forward if they're devoting time to this. Any objection by any of the board members on that regard? All right, um, I believe one more person wants to speak on behalf of the association. Yeah, I'm Greg Holbog and I'm a, a board member of the Open Mills Property Owners Association and I'm also a uh, on the committee uh, for the lake management that we're pursuing the dredging and uh, rehabbing the lake, basically. Um, Jackie was a little bit off on the uh, <clears throat> cost. Actually, we've gotten a, a more recent estimate of about uh, 40,000 uh, to, what, what we're doing is uh, not drag dredging. We are having a, uh, a gentleman come in there with a, basically a vector and he's going to pump the material that he vectors up uh, all the way to a farm field and we've gotten permission from the uh, uh, owner, it's owned by the Abbey, uh, the uh, Benedictine Abbey up there uh, owns this farm. Uh, they're, they have been uh, partnering with us basically to help alleviate, to help uh, solve the problem because they feel responsible for, uh, we'd say uh, probably the majority of the silt comes from that farm over the years. Uh, it was, um, they tried to contain it with a, a berm, which was poorly built and kept washing away and uh, restored the berm. They are going to allow us to pump the material that we dredge into some uh, bags, some geo, uh, geotechnical bags to retain the silt and allow it to uh, drain off and dry out and remain in place. Um, so that's that's a big uh, big help, uh, but um, focusing on that the integrity of that culvert, uh, I appreciate HR Green's expertise in this matter. I'm a little disturbed as an engineer. I, I have a, a DE exit uh, license, but I I'm retired now. But um, I was hoping to see something a little bit more technical, uh, like some some testing, maybe even a low test, because I'm very concerned. Uh, 10 years uh, doesn't seem like a long time, but that's a pretty short light time left on a bridge. Uh, so it could be a lot less. And I'd like to know if they're going to do more testing. And um, 
what the condition of, of under the silt is. There could be some further deterioration we haven't even seen. So uh, thank you for your time. Um, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you. So I think um, as the <clears throat> next phase of this goes on, these questions are gonna be addressed and we'll come back in 30 days, but getting the plan for the dredging and, and confirming that that's gonna be a, a safe operation, I think is the next step in moving that forward. So, um, you know where to reach us if there's any questions, but we will put this on tentatively for the second meeting of May for further discussion on the next steps, okay? All right, yep. thank you. Thank you. For your time. Thank you, Mr. Hardnett. Thank you. All right, next item, next item on the agenda is a discussion regarding salary ranges. Um, as you know, this item has come back for us uh, from a prior presentation. Um, this salary study um, initially began, and there's a previous salary study in 2017. It was supposed to be looked at every three years. Um, we are past the three years, so it was looked at again now in uh, 2022. And the point of the salary study was to make sure that the employees, based on their um, experience, years of service, are within the uh, salary ranges of similar villages. Um, you'll see from the chart there's a minimum range, which would be the low end of similar villages, the mid range, or the maximum range. And I think what you'll see from this report is the intention is to get the people who are should be at the mid-range into those ranges. Um, there is an impact on the village budget of approximately two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which has been um, included in the most recent budget, which still balances. Um, so I guess uh, we're looking for direction from the board. Um, I would like to see this go through with Administrator Kime, uh, given the ability to adjust the amounts individually, plus or minus 5%, but to stay within the budgeted amount uh, that they that they suggested. So with that, I'll open the floor to discussion or questions to the trustees. Trustee Pierce. Oh, I, I'm just so happy to go first on this. Um, I really value our employees. I know they work hard, uh, but one of the questions I asked at the last meeting was to have the percentage of increase amounts in here and we've got percentages up to 27 percent several are in the 17 18 percent range and um, many of them are six seven percent um, i don't know how we can give 27 percent raises or 18 percent raises um, our, our employees are valuable but our, our taxpayers are paying money too and um, if we're going to work on bringing our employee salaries up into the ranges of other communities, um, I, could, I could support doing it in phases over a couple years or several years, um, say, you know, the 4% is a minimum each year with, with a certain adjustment on top of that. But I can't support um, just doing 17%, 18% jumps in pay raises. And we've even got employees on here who just started working recently and are get, would be scheduled for 6% raises. I, I, I don't know if our private industry is doing that. And I don't know um, if we truly can't afford to do that. And I, I know we can afford it, but, but um, there's things we, we also need to pay for too. So um, if it's not phased in, I can't, I can't support it. Thank you, Trustee. I'm assuming every trustee's hand right now. So, so, oh, yeah, I Trustee Mace. so being a businessman, here's the problem. So you got let's just start from the bottom up. So you you, you put someone in training, a community service officer, with, with their making, and they can go after all the training you put them through the expense, the village the expense, and they can they can go six miles and double their money. I mean, that's the problem we have. Um, the other problem with this is you've got command positions within the police department that you get, uh, you get that, that potentially could make less than officers with strikes on them. So you get command, you get the deputy chief, you get commanders. So they're locked, as the way I understand this, they're locked into a program where they could be doing overtime and whatnot. 
sergeants could make more than the commander. That to me is a problem. They're all putting their life on the line. You know, I, I, I understand the uh, 14 to 27% records clerk. Those are all training jobs. I get it. You train them. There's a, there's a cost of being in business. Um, everybody's competing for that person's job. And, and everybody wants a trained employee. They're going to pay someone else because they want to train. And they're going to steal that person for a buck more. That's happening in the restaurant business. That's happening in my business. That's happening in just about every business. People, people aren't working when it's hard to find. So you got to pay the people the right amount of money, a fair value. So I get it. That's the only problem I have with it, where, where you've got the deputy chief locked in, you've got commanders locked in. Um, that's the only unfair part about this part, where how do you not lock, lock those guys in where you can have potential guys under and make it more money? Um, if I may. Sure. Um, that's why the mayor alluded to, you know, allowing me to place people in the range. You know, this methodology where certainly if somebody doesn't have a lot of experience, they move up to the minimum, or if they have a lot of experience, 10 plus years of experience, move into the mid-range, it works 90 for 90% of our employees. But there are some employees, and you, met, you actually hit it right on the head, yeah. CSOs, this methodology doesn't seem to work. You know, our data is our data. We show you the, the data we collected. We, we think we're, we're accurate. Um, but there needs to be some other considerations. And, and certainly the CSOs are making a lot more money in other places where we currently have you know, no applicants for a posted position because they're making more money other places. So absolutely right. The competition for municipally trained employees is probably um, you know, greater than ever. Um, these are specialty jobs. I, I think Zeta alluded to, you know, you know, even in finance, um, you, know, you can't just take an accountant off the street that knows, fine, that, you know, that knows business accounting. Governmental accounting is way different. Mm -hmm. um, and those jobs are very difficult. We're seeing the strains of recruitment and uh, retention. And th this is the intent of this is to address that. But if, if, you, if you do uh, move forward with this, um, it's with the understanding that I would make an adjustment to a commander. And it's common in every community that a sergeant that's working big overtime will be command staff. That, that happens just about everywhere, and it certainly happens here. Um, we would try to close that gap um, with maybe a five percent, you know, something to try to to try to balance that out a little bit better. I don't know if it will ever fix it. To some of you doing a lot of overtime, but we would like it. We would like the, the goal here to, is to make it equitable, um, so our employees don't look down the road six miles and. Then we have to replace, you know, the staff with somebody who cost even more. It, you know, it was just a horrible thing where whoever had the dog never could get promoted, never can get an increase in pay because they had the dog, so they were always in a lower position, even though they did more work. So that was kind of unfair treatment to the folks that great guys that had the dog. That's what we're trying to fix. Yes, yeah. and I, I'm I'm in support of this. It's just the commander structure, and and, and it's a different business environment today's world. Very different. Thank you, Trustee Peterson. I'm in support of this. I um, inquired um, at two different places about um, these increases, and they, were, the people I talked to, said they this is exactly where it should be, and um, it's very competitive. I want to retain the staff that we have. Um, at this point, learning what I learned in the last couple of days, um, I wouldn't blame them. <laughs> they won. Um, and I, I hate to say that, but, um, you know, these increases are necessary in order to retain, train good staff that knows what they're doing. And right now, Antioch has a lot of things going on. We've got a lot of things in the hopper. Um, the residents want a lot done and we need a staff that can do it. And we do, we have that staff and I, I'd like to keep them. So I'm in support of this. So I have to say. Thank you, Trustee Luther. Quick question is percentage increases. Is this to bring it up to the study levels? 
or does this include any normal staff increases or pay increases that we would be incurring in this new budget as well? Um, for, for example, if you were doing 3% raises, is that 3% yeah. still there and this, or are you talking about this? Yeah, all we, we put one of the columns is, you know, if, if we do nothing, typically, yeah, it would be across the board 3%. So we started with that. So you have a comparison of, you know, as of May 1, if you didn't do anything with this, I'll show you that number, right. okay? And then percentages next to that would be on top of that to place them in a, in a, in a range in a competitive, what we feel is a, a market rate for that employee at that skill level with that experience. All right, so the effective May 1st number you have in here, would be the number with no increases going in the next fiscal year, correct? No, the number you see as of May 1 would be represents a 3% increase. Well, that already includes that 3%, and you're adding these percentages on top of that? Yes. Um, obviously, that, that ups that percentage increase that are going across the board on some of these, which I don't have a problem with. I, I, I understand the min mid max thing but I, I um, from someone that works for a company that does flat raises based on a company performance it's the most frustrating thing in the world for me because you can be the best employee in the world and get the same amount of an increase as someone who's a drain on the company so I just want to make sure that you as a village administrator would have the, the leeway to make adjustments based on not just ranges but job performance history, longevity, everything else that comes into play. As long as that flexibility is there, I don't have a problem with this. I know it's going to take a while to get salaries up to where we need to be to keep everyone happy, but we, it has to be based on performance first and then these ranges. So as long as we have that flexibility, I, I don't have a problem. Yeah, and, and we do. And I, I've had you know, several discussions with the mayor and I've, he's had a lot to say about this. He's paid attention to this. He wants some input into that as well. So I'll work with him. Um, I'll make my recommendation. I'll, I'll push, certainly share all of that. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's, that's what we intend to do. <laughs> and it, it's, it is a weird economy. I mean, we're having a hard time in our place of employment finding people. And they're doing the same thing. They're starting with us because they need a job, and then they get an hour or, or a buck or two or three somewhere else, and they're jumping ship. So it's going to be the same with the villages. We just need to be, you know, as best proactive as we can. We're going to have to be reactive too. And when we find a position that's not being filled that in our range, we know why, and then we have to do something about it. That's all. Thank you, Trustee Berman. In favor. All right. Um, so this is up for vote on the regular board meeting later. So um, any other discussion before we move this, the agenda along? All right, um, next item on the agenda is discussion regarding Cigar Palace request for a tobacco license. Is the um, applicant here? I know last time they weren't on Zoom and it says in person, but I'm gonna just say going once, going twice, and we're gonna move past this item. Anybody on Zoom, Rachel? Uh, let me check. No. All right. Um, I have a motion. motion to okay. All right. We're going to move past that item. Uh, next item on the agenda is discussion regarding the Antioch Theater. Um, as everybody's aware, it's been up several times. I see uh, one of the um, petitioners is on Zoom, I believe. I saw Linda Montley there earlier. I see uh, Tim Downey. And I'm hoping tonight that we can either get to a point where we get direction on the original proposal or at a minimum um, allow staff and legal to move forward with working out a uh, sales tax and a rebate program so we don't have to um, continually delay the transaction. So I'm gonna make a motion to table this for the vain reason tabling it because I asked for specific ticket tax figures from last time. I could not make a decision on it. I think three of us asked for those figures in the last meeting. Since we don't have how much those dollar figures were in writing that were in our packet. So I'm asking for a motion to delay this until we get those figures. So I'll table this whole thing. That's my motion. All right, is there a second? Second. Discussion. 
Motion trustee um, Masick to uh, table it, second trustee Berman. Any discussion? I, I was I was hoping for a vote tonight to have it go either be approved or disapproved by the board. Um, I think we've um, I, I think I was pretty clear last time. I think we've dragged this out for the applicant long enough. Um, she, she needs to know whether we approve of it or disapprove of it. But if the board wants to table it, that's up to the board. And um, all right, and I'm just going to be clear. Without that information, I'm voting no. I can't give the guy, you know, sorry, I can't, I, I've asked for some. Yeah, I, 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 and it makes a difference. I believe that uh, in the packet, I did see a figure of 20,000 um, tickets sold. Right. So I don't know, um, again, if that's the figure that uh, we're discussing, but at this point, if there's no other discussion, I've asked for a roll call to uh, table the item or not table the item to discuss it. So um, it would be yes to table. It would be no to discuss it. The cop that doesn't change anything on the yeah, because I asked for a couple of years, not one year. Uh, Michael, I'm not sure what's 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 being presented is something completely different. Com completely different. So historical ticket text is not relevant to what's going to be presented. Okay. All right. So um, motion on the table. yeah, there's a motion on the table. Yeah, take roll. Pierce. No. Basic. Yes, is the table. Yes. Uh, I'll give him one more chance to come back on that. No more. Because I asked for more than one year. Is that a yes to table? Yes to table. Peterson? No. Luther? No. Berman? Yes. All right. Um, three voting no, two voting yes. Uh, the motion, the item is not tabled. Uh, Mr. Gergen, I believe, has a new proposal, yes. uh, which I Briefly mentioned, but we'll go into that. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, based on the previous input of the village board, um, staff has been working with the owner of the Hancock Theater uh, and the prospective purchaser, uh, Ms. Monty. Um, based on, I think there's a general consensus that their journey was not support for a village uh, finance uh, financing of this project, uh, either through a direct grant or through a loan. Uh, based on that, uh, pursuant to your direction, we went back back to the drawing board. So what uh, conceptually, uh, I've asked Mr. Downey and the uh, purchaser to be here this evening, um, what the applicant, actually the owner of the property has generally been in discussions with Monty, is now proposing a completely uh, self-finance, private finance structure. So in fact, the bottom line is there would be no village loan or direct village grant to subsidize uh, this loan or this uh, financing. So this will be a private financing between two private parties. The benefit of that is obviously there will be no financial, direct financial impact um, on the village per se. And secondly, uh, if unfortunately the project did not work, the village would not be the successor of this property. We would not have a mortgage. The property would go back to the current owner. Um, so I think we obviously um, is based on that input I've asked Mr. Downey and Ms. Monty to be, to be here to provide a general summary of their general concept as we speak. They don't have the exact terms. Um, this would be subject to, again, um, reimposing a ticket tax. That ticket tax, um, the revenue would be, really be used to make this deal work between the private parties. So uh, with that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Um, Mr. Downey is actually here to just provide a really brief summary the general structure of this discussions uh, with Ms. Monty, uh, but this will be a private transaction. Again, there will be no village financing. Uh, this will be a way to keep the theater open. Uh, we, we provide you a lot of history of the importance of the Antioch movie theater, and we see it as a major economic draw to our downtown, having a vibrant downtown. Um, that, the exact amount, the ticket tax, the actual details, we do not have, we will bring that back at the next meeting, working with our village attorney, working with Mr. Downey and the purchaser, uh, we would have all those details. What we're really looking for this evening is just general, you know, general input from the board of philosophically whether they would support reimposing ticket tax to allow the Antioch movie theater to stay open. 
Um, so with that, I'll be more than happy to turn over to Mr. Downey or the purchaser um, for any questions. Sure, sure. and I'll, I'll go around the board. So I understand it's more of a tax rebate program um, than the incentive program discussed re originally. So um, I know trustee, uh, I'll start with trustee Pierce and go down the line again if there's any questions about this uh, new proposal. Um, well, first of all, I'm glad we didn't table because if if it had been the the way it was the last time we left it, I would have voted no. Um, if it is truly a self-financed um, venture with the village board, uh, only providing for the the implementation of a ticket tax that allows repayment of the self-financed loan. Um, I, I feel comfortable with that. Thank you, Trustee Masick. For me to vote yes on this, you know, 20,000 people, I, I need proof. I could put a number there. I asked for the number. We should have village records of it. We took in the money, we exchanged the money, and I just don't understand why I can't get a, a, a solid number because $20,000, I agree with what Trustee Pierce is saying, but all I want is a solid number because we're, we're if, if we enter COVID again in fall, we're going to be stuck paying this mortgage. The there tax there is no mortgage anymore, Trustee Pierce. They just removed that from the no. table. This, uh, this is seller finance. So I'm taking the risk. We're asking you to implement a ticket tax that you then are rebating to pay that debt service. If 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 COVID comes and then is unable to make the debt service payment, then I don't get then then I foreclose or whatever. The village so is not yeah. you, you are completely other than implementing and rebating the ticket tax. There's nothing the village needs to do. They're not in the middle of this. So that, that I did, I apologize. I didn't understand that part was 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 redone. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, Trustee Peterson. I'm in support of this too. Um, it would be great. Uh, village isn't taking a risk, and we have a theater open. I'm in favor of it. Trustee Boother, I'm glad to see that you changed the, the terms on this a little bit, and. Um, Look at that, and I don't know when all this was known, but in our packets, it still shows the old proposal in here. So right. it's relatively new, I understand. That's 24 hours. It's 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 right. <laughs> Would have been nice to get a little heads up on that prior to this. That's but, what I'm going for. but that being said, I am in favor of further discussion about the ticket tax, and because that's something that I've been in favor from since the beginning, and I'd like to see that move forward. Right. Thank you, Trustee Berman. The same as. Trusted with heart. I was looking at the other information. I sitting here trying to shuffle through my fingers. Okay. All right. right. So, so again, to move this along to the trick, the be fluid, um, we're going to strike it uh, hopefully from the agenda for the regular board meeting when it comes out because it's, <laughs> it's a moot point right now. And then for the next meeting, I like it to be. Um, I guess it would need to be on the cow, but also on the regular agenda to reimpose a ticket tax for a tax rebate to pay back the uh, financing of the deal, and then um, get this so everybody can move forward with the with the project. So I appreciate your patience. And um, any other discussion on this other than we will discuss this and hopefully move on quickly at the next meeting. So will, will there be at the same time? I know there was original discussion about um, liquor sales at the theater. Will that be at a Further point, or is that going to be brought at the same time? Yeah, that'll be at a later point. You know what? Yeah, we'll do that at a later point. <laughs> um, all right. So, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Linda. Thank you, Tim. And um, see you in two more weeks, hopefully, for the last time. Not forever, but just for this. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, discussion. Regarding an ordinance amending section 4 2B 15 regarding a gross sales ratio requirement for establishments selling food and/or beverages. Uh, as a reminder, this was up, uh, this was raised last time 
we had a board meeting because drive time golf came in requesting a liquor license. Um, Trustee Dominiac uh, rightly pointed out that there had been an amendment to the code in 2020 uh, with a minimum food and beverage sales, uh, which we have since pulled and rewritten. We pulled the um, notes and the ordinance. Uh, we have a new draft. It was clear from the draft and the discussion that the uh, ordinance was drafted that way to specifically limit gaming cafes. And since that time that was drafted, uh, we've realized there are other areas of entertainment, including um, indoor golf places, ax throwing, arcades, other things that are entertainment uh, provisions that have a um, <laughs> that have uh, liquor sales, as well as potentially any breweries that might want to come into town that do not also serve food. So, based on those considerations. Uh, there is a new uh, draft of the proposal in front of you. Um, I have one suggestion when we talk about entertainment, and I did not catch it in the first draft. And I would like to see the word entertainment, and I would like to see excluding gaming revenues, because I don't want someone to say that the gaming is um, uh, the entertainment. So I'd like to see that. Otherwise, um, as drafted, I'd like the board to discuss if they're in favor of this draft with that revision. Um, move forward so trustee pierce do you have any questions or comments about the uh proposed revision to that ordinance well first of all i don't know if i'd like to be drinking and throwing axes <laughs> <laughs> kind of dangerous for the people around me i think um that being said um if they get a liquor license that are, are they also then eligible for gaming I know their diagram doesn't show any gaming in there if I remember reading it correctly, but I'm curious, does this open the door for, for gaming establishments, to, you know, entertainment establishments to have a gaming room in the back or something? Yes, the end day would be a barn, with a barn license, you are eligible for gaming in the state of Illinois. We are not a home unit. We cannot impose additional uh, restraints under the SL versus our Park case. So, so we're looking in 2020, we did a very careful review of this and we wrote this ordinance and now we're going to change the ordinance to make it work for somebody. I don't, I don't know. I want to hear what the rest of the board says. I, I, um, I had a question in that regard to Trustee Pierce um, specifically, you know, I, I get this is for, not for the broader I guess we'll get to that, but the broader um, effect on this, uh, I know the current applicant had a, um, does have a least restriction regarding gaming. And my question was if they came in and were moving, would they have to come in for the liquor license again? And I was told yes. I don't know how that would change the board's feeling, but um, that is something I asked when we were talking about how this liquor license could be transported. So, yeah, I mean, if you have to move it, they are geographically restricted. So, yes, you'd have to. That would be changed. Um, what what's, what stops every other establishment in town coming forward and saying ninety five percent of my revenue is from gasoline? I need I, I need the ordinance change for that. Or ninety five percent of my revenues uh, gathered from uh, ceramic making. I need need the ordinance change for that. I mean, I think we're changing the ordinance for one person. And to be fair, constitutionally. To the rest of the businesses in town, we'd have to change it for everybody, and I, I think it's a slippery slope. So, like I said, I'll be quiet now. Um, Trustee, all good points. Um, a couple things. One, I do think that actually, in your analogy of a ceramic studio, I think that would be on there. It's an amusement activity. It's, um, it's an amusement activity, such as painting studios or other generally known activities. Um, I will say that the revenue quotient, if you read under subsection three on page two of the ordinance, excludes regulated games of chance. So you could not add into the video gaming revenue into that. Um, obviously, there is a restraint on the lease. That is not something that this body really generally gets involved with. Private transactions are outside the scope generally of what we do, um, with specific exceptions, of course. Every lawyer has an exception every rule. Um, so, Trustee, you were going to say something. I was just going to say, he may have a restriction on his lease, a 
but other businesses won't. And I that's the best fact, because of course, and we are, well, obviously all of the facts have to come into play as we, or you as a body make decisions on things. Um, but I think that the general relationship between a tenant and a landlord is it's kind of outside the scope, respectfully, outside the scope of what the body politic is here. Thank you all. All right, thank you. Trustee Mason. You know, I've, I've, I've been in this place that the clientele is not the tap clientele. Um, when you're swinging a club, you're, 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 you're in there taking lessons. You're spending money for the lessons, not for the booze. You can't swing a club, take lessons, and get drunk. It just doesn't work. Um, I'm, I'm in there. I'm seeing people older, and older than me, which is hard to believe, swinging a club. They're, they're, they're in their 70s. They're, you know, they're, they're in there trying to improve their game, mentally focus for their game, getting a lesson that they want to beat the guy they take on the course. This is a seasonal, seasonal business. They're dead in the summer, except for some lessons. They make they're busy in the winter because someone wants to play Pelt Beach. The masters, the courses they have on, on, on this stuff, that's their that's their busier time. Summertime, August, July, they're, 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 they're slow. So how do you help a business? And, and I don't know, a golf course, top golf, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, have that quenching of thirst at, at the facility. Most business transactions, a lot of millions and millions of dollars have been made at, 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 at businesses just at top golf, just at golf courses. So. You got a higher class of people that, that you know, spend the money because they can't spend the money on the golf lessons, the golf clubs, the two thousand dollar clubs, and that's the challenge. That how do I get the high ones driving for seven hundred bucks this year? No, I'm not. But that's that's what people do with their golf. So it's a, it's, it's it's a different mentality. Thank you, Trustee Peterson. Um, I don't have any problem with this. Trustee Luther? No, I think it's it, it opens up a Antioch for a whole new slew of different types, like axe throwing places and everything else. And it, it's something that it, the gaming part of it doesn't scare me off. I think this is something that we need to do. Okay. Trustee, Trustee Berman? I, I don't have a problem with that. All right. Um, there's not any other discussion. This item is on the regular agenda um, later on, so yeah, stay tuned. Uh, any other business that uh, needs to be discussed at the committee the whole meeting? All right, if not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion, Trustee Bluthart. Second, Trustee Peterson. Roll call, please. Here. Aye. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Bluthart. Yes. Berman. Yes. All right, it's 7.38. Uh, we will resume with the regular board meeting at 7.45, meetings adjourned. All oh, please. Uh, Trustee Pierce? Can I hear you? I'm sorry, I'm present. Trustee Mason? Here. Trustee Peterson? Here. 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 Present. Um, so the first item on the agenda is the uh, mayor report. Um, the trustee liaison assignments. We are going to do that the first meeting of May. Um, as we go forward, we're I plan on um, shuffling the liaison trustee assignments um, annually and looking at what those assignment groupings make sense. Um, makes sense to me to do that in May because that's during election years when new um, members may or may not be joining the board. Um, so I will do those assignments next week and uh, or two weeks and I'll talk to each individual trustee about um, those assignments um, in the meantime. I also, as of the May meeting, um, plan on, and sorry for those of you who had to sit through the cow meeting, switching the regular meeting and the committee the whole meeting, doing the regular meeting first so those people can um, move on and then the committee the whole meeting will be second um, the only disadvantage is we can't discuss and vote on the same evening but there'll be a two-week period uh, which is I still think reasonable so 
Um, those two changes will be coming for May. And then um, next, if there's any uh, citizens wishing to address the board, I think they all, um, everyone who signed up did that during the committee of the whole meeting. So we'll move on to the consent agenda, uh, which only has one item. And uh, anyone, any um, motion to remove any of the items? Otherwise, I'd entertain a um, motion and a second. So second. Motion trustee uh, Peterson, second trustee Bluthart, roll call please. Pierce. Aye. Mason? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Bluthart? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no, motion carries. Next item on the regular business is consideration and approval of payment of accounts payable as prepared by staff in the amount of $599,621.57. Entertain a motion and a second. So moved. Motion, second. Motion, Trustee Peterson. Second, Trustee Berman. Uh, roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masek? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luthart? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no. Motion carries. Um, items number three and four um, are going to be um, stricken from the uh, agenda. Item number five is consideration and approval of an ordinance amending section 4-2B-15 of the Municipal Code of Antioch regarding a gross sales ratio requirement for establishments selling food and or beverages. Um, I would entertain a motion and a second, waiving the second reading. So moved, waiving the second reading. Motion, Trustee Bluthart. Second. Second, Trustee Peterson. Uh, any discussion? Waiving the second reading. Waiving the second reading. Otherwise, uh, roll call, please. Pierce? No. Masek? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Blueheart? Yes. Berman? Yes. Four voting yes, one voting no, motion carries. Next item on the agenda is consideration and approval of an ordinance adding one more class eight bar and tavern liquor license for Drive Time Indoor Golf LLC located at 420 East Illinois Route 173 in prorating fees, ordinance number 22 04 21. I'd entertain a motion and a second, waiving second reading. So moved. Waiving the second reading. Motion, Trustee Peterson. Waiving the second reading. Second, Trustee Masick. Waiving the second reading. Roll call, please. Pierce? No. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luthart? Yes. Berman? Yes. Four voting yes, one voting no. Motion carries. Uh, mo next item on the agenda is consideration and approval of a resolution approving a site plan for an outdoor recreation vehicle storage facility at the property commonly known as Zero Drum Court, pin number 0208-201, resolution number 22-28. Um, Mr. Garrigan. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. This matter comes before you for a request for site plan review. Um, as you recall, this matter was considered by the village board um, approximately two years ago for a site plan and invariance. Um, the applicant has uh, been working with staff. Again, for the record, the applicant is not seeking any variances. Um, the property uh, is zero drum court, the need a self storage facility. Um, the African has been operating a recreational vehicle uh, storage facility there. They've been working with staff over the past number of months. Um, and they're now proposing to uh, fully proceed with the site plan review, comply with all the village's ordinances. As you recall, um, PowerPoint, I'm sorry. Michael, why are you looking for that? Um... I might want to entertain a motion in a second from the board on this. I didn't do that before we started the presentation. So, yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion. Motion, Trustee second. Pierce, second, Trustee Booth. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sure. So, for the record, this property is located at the termination or end of drawn court. Um, there's a, actually a self storage facility just located adjacent to this property, located uh, east of the property. Um, this is actually the context of the property itself. The applicant is proposing to uh, construct a, a new, newly improved uh, uh, improved asphalt uh, parking area for the RV storage facility. Currently, there are, are a number of RVs which are currently being stored there. So the applicant is proposing to complete the completion of this project. They'll uh, propose to install a new asphalt parking facility, approximately three quarters of an acre. Um, in addition, pursuant to the ordinance, they will close the whole parking area with a security fence and screen the area with a um, with an enclosure, uh, which again complies with the ordinance. Overall, the applicant is proposing some additional landscaping. The applicant has complied with a landscape plan 
which generally complies with the GOSHA's ordinance. The site to the west and to the south is fully screened. Uh, to the west is the Canadian National Railroad. Uh, and to the uh, south, there's extensive wetlands and mature trees. The property is fully screened. Access will continue to be drawn court. As we've discussed, or we well know, drawn court is a public <coughs> right of way. It is not restricted for any type of RVs or trucks. Those are consistent in our legal, um, legal traffic. In regards to parking, the applicant has complied with the village's ordinances to providing 42 parking spaces uh, and 33 angle parkings for RVs. A screening, as I've already highlighted, the applicant is now complying with the village's ordinance as a rate of screening. Lighting, the applicant is proposing two lighting fixtures, LED uh, fixtures, uh, and they have submitted a photometric plan uh, which complies with the village's ordinance. So in some substance, staff is recommending approval of this proposed site plan with two stipulations. With that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, any questions from from my right side of the board? I don't see Trustee um, Pierce, but any questions over here? How about on the left side? Any questions? Just uh, Steve Bluthart. Mention the two stipulations and then just compliance with regards to the village engineer or to the Indian Fire Protection District. Can you elaborate those are, on those are standard every site plan review that we consider? We just add those stipulations. Final engineering is also finally reviewed and approved by the village engineer. Just in case there's any issues with the fire district, we provide the stipulation standard. After the fire district has worked with the applicant, there are there are no fire department concerns. Okay. I got one question. Trustee Mason. This isn't the this isn't the other other applicant we dealt with. The prior ones. The, you know, they they're on drawn court. This is do we have the fire department can't go down drawn court or the there were some previous inaccurate uh, concerns about on drawn court not being allowed for um for truck traffic or, or RVs or, or fire. There was also expressed concerns of whether fire truck is the same applicant. Yes, it is. <laughs> This is the same applicant. I think if you had looked at the staff report, the applicant's name's on there, it's the same applicant. I'm not sure which applicant you're talking about, but I believe mm -hmm. for the record, it's um, any need self storage. The applicant's actually here this evening. If you have any questions. The one that prior applied for it two years ago. Yeah. It's, uh, yes, for the record, it's the yeah. same applicant. Any other? Questions, trustees, any other discussion? I, I got one question. I, yeah, I think you missed my hand up. Um, uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to, hold on one second, Scott. We're trying to get you back live. I mean, it looks like good. a- We just have to turn off the presentation because yeah. overriding the Zoom. <laughs> they may be happier with the presentation over there. You go, there you go. Okay, now we see it. All right. All right. I just just basically have two questions. One, I want to ensure there's no variances in this. And two, the lighting level at nighttime conforms to um, village uh, bright light codes or whatever it is. Or I notice there are adjustable lights if they need to be turned down a little bit. Yes, the applicant has uh, proposed uh, the, the actual lighting fixtures will be LED. They're, the actual fixtures are fully enclosed, 90 degrees, directed down, pursuant to our ordinance. And at the property line, there's a, um, a zero foot candle, illumin I'm sorry, less than a half a foot candle illumination, which is consistent with our ordinance. And more importantly, as you know, there are resident, there are apartments to the north. Uh, the applicants, the, the actual those residents will not be able to see the light source because the light source will be fully enclosed. And if there is any issue, issues, we'll work with the applicant to address those residents' concerns consistent with our policy. And there are no other variances the applicant has addressed our landscaping requirements, uh, lighting requirements, and screening requirements. Please tell the applicant thank you on both parts. Thank you. Any other questions? Once going twice, okay. Uh, roll call, please. Pierce. Aye. Masek? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no motion carries. Next item on the agenda is consideration and approval of a resolution for improvement under the Illinois Highway Code 
related to rebuild Illinois grant funding for Grim Road, resolution number 22-29. Um, this information I saw was in the packet. I believe the, uh, the amount off the top of my head was $410,000. Um, um, so I entertain a motion and a second for this. So moved. Motion trustee Bluthar. Second. Second trustee Pearson, any discussion? Not roll. Oh yeah, Trustee Mason. You know when we when we're doing Grim Road, maybe we should change it over to Ainsley Historical Society. It'd be a great time to if you're gonna have industrial uh, backing of that road. Uh, I don't think uh, people want to put business on a road called Grim. We'll do a name change. That would be a good part for for her to take that project up. What would be a good name, historical name for that road? An Antioch historical name. Because who wants to put a business on, hey, we're at 444 Grim Road <laughs> on their business card? 666 <laughs> Grim Road. That's even better. So I think that should be. That, uh, All right, we gotta get we gotta get the money first. No, I know, I know the money. Yeah. We'll go yes to the money, but I think, I think that that should be the consideration to give her another project. All right, all right. Thank you. Um, roll call, please. Pierce. Did you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You froze. I can hear you guys. Say it one more time. I. Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no motion carries. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda is consideration and approval of an ordinance authorizing the approval of a water tower lease agreement and execution of all necessary documents to effectuate such lease agreement for the village of Antioch, ordinance number 22 04 25. I have a motion and a second. If so, waiving the second reading. So moved. Motion waiving the second reading. Tr Trustee Peterson, waiving the second reading. Second. Second, Trustee Bluthart. Um, I don't know if Dennis Paul is on Zoom or if there's any questions, but is. is there any um, questions for this uh, on this matter? Discussion on this matter? Nope. Okay. Um, Trustee Masick. So under section 10, under that area there for the insurance, I like to take the risk off the taxpayers and put it, I like additional insurance, so, you know, because we're saying in that paragraph there, and no one's at fault. If that water tower half falls off, I get no water. So who's, who's responsible for fixing a water tower? They do stuff where a child gets hurt, electrocuted, because <coughs> Lines aren't maintained. I like to have other people's insurance policy used before the village policy has to be released for people to, to go after. So we need, we need to tighten it up with additional insurance and primary non contributory language. Okay. Um, that and, makes sense? Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think we're talking, you know, especially the attorney language, the like segregation language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're, it gives, it gives all, all parties hold on. Well, we gotta put if it's their lines, they gotta maintain them. We gotta we gotta have some. True. Okay. Any other um, concerns about this document other than um, adding subrogation language uh, potentially to the agreement and additional insurance? And additional insurance. Jimmy, the village attorney is taking notes on this. Yeah. I have no <laughs> objection to those being added or standard. So yeah. Um, anyone else have any questions or concerns about it? All right, if not, uh, is we going to- We're adding that to the motion. Yeah, we need to amend the motion. To or amend that. the motion. Okay, no objection to that amendment. We'll move forward with that. Still object. All right, uh, roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masek? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Berman? Agreement to sign. Agreement to sign. Yes. No. Okay. Uh, four voting yes, one voting no. Motion carries. 
Um, next item on the agenda is item number 10, consideration and approval of a resolution approving the Village of Antioch Historical Preservation Guidelines, resolution number 22-30. I'll entertain a motion and a second. So moved. Motion Trustee Bluthart. Second. Second Trustee Peterson. Uh, this was uh, presented by uh, Mr. Gary at the last meeting. So is there any further discussion on this item? If not, roll call, please. Harris? Aye. Mason? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Herman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no motion carries. Next item on the agenda is consideration and approval of the capital plan for the fiscal year ending 2020. Well, okay, guys. Maybe skip one. Um, consideration and approval of a resolution establishing salary ranges. This is resolution. Seniors. <laughs> for seconds. All right. All right. Here we go. Let's back this up. We're going to go to number 11. Here it is consideration and approval of a resolution authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement with the Township of Antioch regarding the Antioch Senior Center located at 817 Holbeck Drive, Antioch, Illinois, resolution number 22 31. And entertain a motion in the Senate. So moved. Thank you. Motion, uh, motion, Trustee Peterson, second, Trustee Masick. Any discussion regarding this item? If not, roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luthart? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no. Motion carries. All right, let's make sure I'm back on trigger. Number 12 <laughs> is consideration and approval of a resolution establishing salary ranges. Resolution number 22-32. Entertain a motion in the second. Motion trustee Masick. Second. Second trustee Bluthart. Um, any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Pierce? No. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Bluthart? Yes. Herman? Yes. Four voting yes, one voting no. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is item number 13 consideration of the approval of the capital plan for the fiscal years ending 2023 through 2028. 27. 27. All right. Um, no resolution number or anything. So I was just looking for a, a motion and a second regarding the approval of the capital. So move. motion, Trustee second. Bluthart, second, Trustee Peterson. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Mason? Yeah, well, I'm going to go through each page. Yes. <laughs> Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no. Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda, uh, which is a big one and one we talked about a lot, is consideration of the approval of the operating budget for the fiscal year May 1st, 2022 to April 30th, 2023. I entertain a motion and a second. So moved. Motion Trustee Thank Peterson. You. Second Trustee Bluthart. Any discussion regarding the budget? Not roll call, please. Harris? Yes. Mason? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luthart? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no. Motion carries. Last item on the agenda is consideration and approval of an ordinance authorizing the village administrator to sell, salvage, or otherwise dispose of equipment. Ordinance number 22 04 26. I'd entertain a motion and a second waiving the second reading. <coughs> So move. Motion, Trustee Peterson, waving the second reading. Waving second. the second reading, sorry. Waving the second reading. Second, Trustee Masick, waving the second reading. Uh, any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Herman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no. Motion carries. Next item is the administrator's report. Anything? Additional, all right, thank you. Uh, village clerk report, anything additional? Uh, screen cleanup day is tomorrow with fruit. Oh, I didn't get clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, curb. I, I have uh, a question about, I have a question about that, um, or just a comment. The next spring cleanup we have, or the next time we negotiate a contract with, uh, with uh, Groot, uh, can we work on getting a separate spring cleanup from a regular garbage day during the middle of the week? or to have it follow a weekend instead of having everybody's stuff piled up out all week? 
yeah, village administrator time is shaking his head yes. So you can look at that contract as well as the leaf portion of it. Um, all right, so we have uh, any trustee reports other than the ones that were received in writing? Anything they would like to add? I have one. Yep, Trustee Pierce. I just want to make a comment about our police department. They're, as always, doing a wonderful job working hard to protect the citizens. One new item they're doing, and they just started earlier this month, was they're on while on patrol making random stops in, the, in neighborhoods at people's houses and just introducing themselves and, uh, and trying to find out residents' concerns. So um, if it's a police officer knocking on your door, it may be a good thing where they just want to know what you think and what they can do to serve you better. Um, this is a positive step towards uh, communities, community policing. So I, I want to tell them thank you and encourage them to continue it. And the police outing is June 3rd. So, so oh, it's June 10th. No, it's June 3rd now. So June 3rd is a police outing. Oh, are you kidding? I got a brief schedule that with Dan. All right. So just so everybody knows, support the police outing. Um, any requests for executive sessions? Yes, I got one for potential litigation. Okay, so we have a request for potential litigation. Um, motion in a second to move into executive session. I'll make a motion. Motion, Trustee Pierce. Second, Trustee Bluthart. Um, this is a motion to move into executive session with no further business to take place after uh, executive session. Uh, roll call, please. Harris? Aye. Nasek? Yes. Davidson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Berman? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no. Motion carries. We're going into executive session with no further business to take place afterwards. Meeting is going into executive session at 8 11.